Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's video, I thought we'd go ahead and do red chin chompas. Hunting chins has been requested a lot in the past, so I thought that it was finally a good time to go ahead and try it out. Now, I was debating whether I should do black chin chompas or red chin chompas, or maybe even normal chin chompas, but I figured we'd go for a nice amount of money, and this provides a good amount of money without that much risk. The black chin chompas, I believe, was 250k more, but you do have the risk of dying in the wilderness, so I thought this would be a better option. Of course, I will be doing a video on black chinchampas someday, but for today, we'll just focus on the red chinchampas in the safe zones. So while I was figuring out the gear setup that I was going to use, I actually found a screenshot that I had taken of me doing red chinchampas, and I'm going to be using this for this one hour. The only change is, of course, that now I have a max cape, so we can go ahead and use that. A lot of the items that I am bringing aren't even necessary, really the only things that you need is the box traps to actually catch the chinchampas. I am bringing guam, herbs, and the swamp tar. That is just to do a method that will let you catch chinchampas a little bit faster, even though I am not an expert at 3-ticking it or 1-ticking it, I don't even know what it's called, but it's just faster, that's all you need to know. If you plan on doing the faster method, I suggest looking up a video on it because I am probably not the best person to explain how to do it, but I will give a brief introduction to it throughout the video. The pestle and mortar is also needed for this faster method. I also have an herb sack to store extra grimy herbs that I might need if I do mess up multiple times. Really for the one hour, I don't expect to mess up that many times, but if you're doing this for long periods of time, it might be worth it to bring the herb sack. And then as the weapon that you see me holding, I am using iron darts. This is just to kill any chinchampas that stray too far away, but the area that we will be hunting in doesn't require them because they all stay relatively close. So as we're getting there, I will be teleporting to my house to use the fairy ring. The code for this is AKS, which will teleport us to the Feldup Hills. And this is where we will be hunting the wretch and chompas. If you don't have access to the dungeon that I'm currently going to, there's actually some wretch and chompa spots on the way over there from here. Just know that it is highly recommended to use the dungeon that I'm going to because you will make a lot more money there and you are less likely to be crashed. In order to have access to this private Red Chinchampa area, you will need to have the Western Provinces Hard Diary completed. It's definitely not necessary to have the diary done in order to hunt Red Chinchampas, but it is a lot more chill in here. As you can see, we've lucked out and didn't have to hop any worlds. There's currently nobody here. I thought for sure we'd have to use the skill total worlds to find an empty world because the one time that I came here to hunt Chinchampas, it was pretty crowded. Now, as you noticed, whenever we entered the dungeon, there was already yellow tile markers on the ground. That was from months ago, maybe even a year ago, whenever I hunted Chinchampas for a few hours. I didn't really do too much red Chinchampa hunting on my way to 99 Hunter. Most of it was through Herbivore, and before that, I, I believe I was doing Salamanders, so I didn't really hunt Chins too much. It's not really an activity that I enjoy that much, but I do know that some people actually find it really relaxing, so it might be worth a shot to give it, you know, a fair try. I believe the only time that I spent hunting Red Chinchampas was after I had already achieved 99 Hunter. Uh, I came here to hunt some Red Chins at a chance for a pet, but it didn't last very long before I was bored and I eventually stopped. With that being said, I do eventually plan on getting all the pets, so I will have to make this place my home for hopefully not too many hours. Now, going back to the yellow tile markers that are on the ground, when I first saw them, they looked a little odd, but I trusted my past self that I had put them in the right order or in at least the spots that were benefiting me whenever I was hunting red chinchampas. I thought for sure that the one tile that I have to the far right would be better off if it was moved one tile to the left and one tile down, but again, I trusted my past self that I had put them in the proper spot. But you know, it might be different, there might be a more optimal spot. Uh, that's why I recommend watching the video on how to, again, I don't even know what number it is. I don't know if it's three tick manipulation or one tick manipulation. I'm not really too familiar with that efficient skilling methods. But whenever you look up a guide on that, you should be able to see where they are placing the box traps and in what pattern. 
And speaking of tick manipulation, basically what I was doing was I would reset the trap whenever it would turn green. Runelight has a very nice plugin that shows you whenever a Chinchampa has wandered into your trap, which is very helpful, so I highly suggest using that. But basically, whenever it turns green, you click on it to reset it, and then as soon as I got the Hunter XP drop, I would mix the tar with the herb, and then I would quickly place down the trap, which would basically skip the animation of me placing down the trap. Again, I don't even know if I was doing this properly because it's been a very long time since I've attempted doing this tick manipulation during Hunter. So to reiterate what I've already said multiple times throughout this video, I highly recommend looking up a uh, guide on how to properly tick manipulate here at the Chinchampa area. Take the advice from people who do this for a long time, not from somebody who's only done red Chinchampas for probably three or four hours their entire RuneScape career. While doing this one hour of hunting red Chinchampas, I am happy to say that I only messed up the uh, tar and herb method once. As you can see in the bottom left of my inventory, I do have some Guam tar there, and that is because I mixed the tar with the herb, and I did not place the trap down in time, so it made the Guam tar. And when that happens, all you gotta do is clean one of your grimy herbs, and then you have a brand new one to continue doing the tick manipulation. That is also why I have multiple of the same herb and I have even more in the herb sack. That would come in handy if you were doing this for many many hours without leaving, that way you wouldn't have to rebank and get more herbs. Also I want to say that in the beginning I brought a bunch of extra box traps. Here I'm only using 5, but I believe I brought 9 with me here. And the reason I did that was just in case I were to go AFK and I would not collect my box in time, it would despawn. But I don't believe you need to bring that because these boxes last quite a while and for some reason I ended up dropping all of the box traps while I was resetting them. So I think with maybe the tick manipulation that I was doing, it was laying down extra traps that I had on top of traps that were already there and I didn't even notice it until uh, late in the video. So the extra box traps that I brought were essentially wasted and didn't serve a purpose. So you probably don't want to bring those. I would also like to remind you that I do have 99 Hunter, so the rate at which the traps would fail was a lot lower than if you were doing this at, say, 63. The wiki does recommend that you have at least 80 Hunter if you're doing this for money, because at any lower levels you will be failing a lot and your GP per hour will be very, very small. At least compared to what you can get at very high levels and with the Western Provinces Hard Diary. With that being said, we have finished our one hour and as you can see here, we did indeed break 1 million over the hour of hunting Wretch and Chompas. We can now go ahead and go to the GE and put them in there to sell. The actively traded price is lower than the market price, so I just threw them in there for that price and they did instantly sell, so it might be worth it to put them in there for a slightly higher price and then just let them sit there until they eventually sell, which they will. And with one final price check, we can see that we made a total of 1,086,780 GP, so not bad at all for one hour of hunting Wretch and Chompas. Now again, if you are doing this moneymaker for long periods of time and you have a nice stack of Wretch and Chompas, I highly suggest putting it in the GE for slightly higher than market price, that way you can totally maximize your profit from all the hard work that you put in at the Red Chinchampa private area. Chinchampas will always have a use in RuneScape. People love training their ranged through Chinchampas because it is very fast and it will always hold a nice value. So this is a good moneymaker that will probably stay consistent for a very long time. Now we can go ahead and calculate how much money we made from this one hour of catching chinchampas. Now normally you really won't spend any money catching chinchampas since you are essentially gathering, but because I know I'm going to have some people in the comments say, oh what about the money you spent on the box traps, I'll go ahead and calculate that in there since I did bring some extra ones that were lost and that was totally my fault, but here's me calculating all of the cost. So in this cost, I am putting in the four box traps that I lost. I'm also accounting for the swamp tar that turned into guam tar and the guam leaf that I lost. And by guam leaf, I mean guam herb. So the total cost of supplies for this moneymaker was 445 GP. If we subtract that from the amount of money that we made, which was 1,086,780 GP, we get a grand total profit of 1,000,000 86,335 GP. 
I'd say it's a pretty decent amount of money since we did reach the one male mark, but this money maker really isn't for me. I don't find this to be that relaxing as some people claim, but hey, you might think it's the best thing in the world, so why not give it a shot? I just want to say thanks for checking out the video and if you did enjoy it please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription and as always I will catch you guys in the next episode.